morning. 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 Um, wanna uh, welcome everyone uh, for coming today to join us um, for this talk. Um, there's a phrase uh, that I, um, you would say, ran across um, in my studies or looking at uh, books, uh, trying to say a something. <laughs> and it's, um, you, come, you come and go uh, by daylight. And um, it was a very interesting phrase for me because uh, this uh, coming and going by daylight, um, it's been interesting uh, sh sheltering in place and actually being uh, more in place myself on uh, Sonoma Mountain um, during this time of, of uh, the pandemic and, and all the, the fires. Um, but it's uh, kind of kind of witnessing the the nature, witnessing what happens with with the sun. Um, so uh, of course I began my day uh, with zazen, and um, now that the season is is uh, is getting more cool on the mountain and then at the same time, um, it's darker uh, in the morning. And so when uh, we, we face, uh, Kashan and I face actually the, the road <laughs> from our house and um, when we sit, uh, now there, it, it's completely, pretty much dark outside, but there's a, the, the darkness, um, the darkness turns into kind of a, a blue, a deep blue as the sun, as the sun comes up. So the, the darkness uh, uh, starts to, um, or all, as the sun shines, uh, all, all things start to um, appear. And, um, I noticed then throughout the day, uh, shadows, um, they're casted um, as, as the sun rises from, from uh, the, the mountains of the east. And it, uh, the, the, sun, the sun then goes up directly um, over, over Sonoma Mountain and then also casts uh, shadows uh, from the oak trees and, I, and if, and if you look at, at the shadow, the shadow, you can see actually the shadow move, you know, but from afar, you don't see, uh, you, you think that everything is just still, but then everything also is moving. So this, uh, the darkness turns into day. And then of course, then we end, uh, then the sun, the sun goes behind a Sonoma mountain and then things start to actually all forms and all things start to uh, disappear within this darkness. Um, so it's, it, it's in interesting um, how the sun or this daylight when it shines, uh, it, um, it, it distinguishes all, all things. So all, all things then when we look uh, when, when the sun shines, it distinguishes all things and all things then are their individual, um, their individual form. Um, when, when uh, it is dark, a lot of times I, I get up uh, for zazen and um, I don't turn on, turn on my light in my room and I try, I try to feel, feel my way 
uh, putting on uh, my robes, um, maybe looking looking for my glasses, but not not trying to see, um, uh, think or or see or touch things. Um, that that's apart from this darkness. So darkness when when it is completely dark then all things uh all things uh, return to one or they become they become all equal because there's no now there's no distinction when you have dark or, or no uh, darkness no distinction or light then there's this distinction um So it's interesting when when does when does day of course this is in our sutras and stuff when when does day uh, turn into night and then at the same time when when does when does night then turn into day is there really is there a certain moment of of this of this turning uh, between this this light and this dark um, but but this uh, this this intimacy of of shining of shining the light or or this darkness is actually um, is it's the working and it's the interconnectedness or it's the intimacy of actually this this uh, the sun or, or the lightness and then the darkness. Um, how how they um, uh, dynamically uh, function, you you would say function uh, with each other. So so they they are they are now very intimate. This working is very intimate. Um, so so me uh, being uh, in, in one place on the mountain, then it's witnessing this, this day, is wit witnessing this whole day as impermanence, you know? And I know that, of course, everybody knows ev all, all the, the entire day is filled with trillions of, of, of moments that are, are impermanent. So this is the, the impermanency of things, of, of this, the opposites of, of, uh, of light and dark, or you would say uh, uh, the the forms, all the forms, then they become one, or this oneness of all the forms, then they become uh, individual parts. Um, so these opposites then of of uh, a distinct a distinction or, or separation, then they become equal, like I was saying, or, or this equality, this equality then returns to actually something that's uh, distinguished. So what, it, what is equal and what is not? What is individual and what is, what is not? When we, when we see things uh, through through our practice in this way, then we see things actually in a in a very very big view. So it's not not one sided or um, it's to hold to hold things um, or or it's to uh, it's to be close to be close with life, you know, life itself. But in in a very and this is this is a Buddhist way. It's a it's a big big view. Of, of how how to look at things or how to view view life or view the world but that's that's also comes from from our practice of of returning to our life as it is um, so last last week uh, we had um we had a three-day session. Our session is a, it's a meditation intensive, and and actually it was this uh, session we have it every October, because it was 
um, dedicated to uh, to Bodhidharma's um, uh, Parinirvana, so his, his death, and he uh, he passed away um, October fifth of five hundred and twenty eight, uh, and in nineteen nineteen eighty nine. Uh, we we had the chance to actually go to Bodhidharma's cave, and Bodhidharma's cave is is located uh, up on this uh, Mount Song, which is high high in the mountains, and it's I think it's in back in back of uh, the Shaolin Temple. Roshi, do you remember? I, I can all, all I know is is that we climbed up uh, thousands of steps up up to Bodhidharma's cave. And then this, that cave is, is where then Bodhidharma just, he sat and then he faced, he faced the wall for nine years. And um, uh, he, he was born uh, in 440 and, and he was the son uh, of, a, of a king and he was a Brahmin and then he, he, um, found out and, and uh, switched, switched to Buddhism. And with the help of his father, then he received uh, teachings from Prajnatara. And Prajnatara uh, then told Bodhidharma that he, he must go, go to China. So this was when, this was in the, the days in which they didn't have internet or um, they didn't have planes or, so he took a boat and the the boat, uh, or he skirted around around uh, then the Malay uh, Peninsula, and then went and and entered the the southern part of China. And it took him took him three years. Um, and he uh, he he then made made his way up from southern China, then uh, towards uh, the middle part of China. And during that time. Uh, there was, there was actually uh, millions, millions of Zen teachers and Zen students, and and also thousands of actually temples that were built at that time for, for the practice of Zen. And uh, the Emperor Wu then uh, heard about Bodhidharma and then. And then asked uh, Bodhidharma. He he wanted to Emperor Wu wanted to see Bodhidharma and asked uh, Bodhidharma about if if I practice, will there be merit, you know, in building temples and in being a good person, um, doing good things. And Bodhidharma didn't didn't respond, didn't respond to him, and he he actually then just walked away, and then he went to the Shaolin Temple and. Uh, walked up the steps and then uh, faced the wall for for nine years. Um, so, you know, two hundred years even before Bodhidharma, there was the practice of Zen in China. But um, why why is Bodhidharma uh, considered uh, to be one of the great teachers that transmitted this this uh, the, the, this zazen or this practice is is because at that time uh, many of many of the teachers uh, were were saying that uh, to do to do meditation then is is to how you calm yourself you know. How you be how you be more confident um, so it's it's like purifying purifying your mind to become to become something or to become a Buddha or to become enlightened um, or to practice to practice meditation but Bodhidharma um, he he um, he he at that, at that time it looked from a conventional view of the ordinary person that uh, Bodhidharma was was sitting zazen and he was doing meditation, and all the the 
the people in China and all the scholars were writing that, oh, it, it does fit exactly what we're doing and he's doing Zazen. <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's doing Zazen and then they said that, that that's, you know, he, he's, he, he's good, but it was actually 200 years after that humanity or we found out actually what he was really doing. So he wasn't, he wasn't doing meditation. He wasn't doing anything. Um, he, he, uh, he, he, he was, he was, he was, uh, of course, doing, he was doing nothing, which is doing something, which is actually receiving. And then, then it's a transmitting. He was transmitting something that we now to this very day and actually this very moment that, that we have. So this, a, it's a transmission that he was doing. Um, and that's, that was a very big mistake for, for, uh, for the people in China to think that he was, that he was doing Zazen. Um, so it, it, uh, it may seem, it may seem that this is, this is a radical point, but then at the same time, he was doing exactly the same as what the Buddha did when the Buddha uh, went up to Vulture Peak and he had the assembly of, of like 1 million, 1 million students. And the Buddha then, then uh, in front of the assembly held up, you know, held up a flower, you know, and, and then everybody, everybody looked. <laughs> everybody looked at the flower and there was complete silence in the assembly, you know, and then the, then the, the Buddha blinked and then he kind of, he, he, he kind of, he twirled the flower. And then Maha Kashapa, then he, he smiled. And then the, the Shakyamuni Buddha said, then uh, I, I now transmit I now transmit the wondrous Shobogenzo Nihan Myoshin to, to then Mahakashapa. And um, of, of course, th this transmission or this uh, to, to go into the, the meaning or the, the I, I talked about it before is the Shobogenzo or show. Shobo could be um, uh, the the true the true Dharma or the true uh, uh, the true actual reality, and then Gen uh, Gen is a, a Gen Gen is your your eye or the eye that sees. So it, it's a it's a symbol for for the wisdom, the wisdom that uh, reflects, uh, reflects all things as it is. So again, and then Zo is, is the treasury or, or the storehouse. So actually the Shobo Genzo or this transmission of the Nihan Myoshin is the, the Buddha's mind um, that uh, when it is transmitted then all things actually all things are seen as equal without without condition thought or without measuring it without judging it um, without our our own stamp that we make on it so this this is a it's a very very deep practice so we're not we're actually not doing anything um, so so this uh this this meditation uh the the gju let's see uh gju gju zanmai then is is the the correct transmission of of from the buddha or you would say from the entire universe to the buddha bodhidharma 
and uh, Ehei Dogen, which is the founder of Soto Zen in, in Japan, and then coming actually to us. When we, when we sit Zazen, um, we actually are, are just, we're just sitting, so we're not doing meditation. Um, we, we take the posture of, of just sitting and then we, we, um, we receive, we receive, uh, the light of the Buddha. So there's, there's this, uh, there's a glistening, you know, that happens or a sparkle, <laughs> you know, it could be a sparkle. And I, I, I think of, of, uh, of uh, a trumpa, uh, uh, there's sparks, you know, that that are emitted from from just this this sitting or this Buddha sitting or just doing. There, there's a spark or there's there's a there's this uh, this the sun that shines and it it's the wisdom the wisdom that runs through all things or the wisdom of actually of the Buddha that also we receive, we receive, and then we also transmit. So it's, it's not we, or it's not me, it's not you, but it's the transmission then that happens um, with all, within all things uh, that, are, that are opposite or that are existing uh, beyond uh, what we can even conceive of. So this this is Jiju Zanmai, which is the samadhi the samadhi of of the self. This this Jiju Zanmai. Jiju uh, Yu uh, comes from this ultimately illuminating ultimately illuminating the light. The Jiju uh, Yu is so so one part of of this ultimately illuminating the light is illuminating the, the light within so it's to receive so it's to receive this light um, so that that's a that's a turning you know turning the light inward and then receive it yourself so it's a receiving when we when we are actively participating in just this sitting posture so it's an inward, you, we're inward. So silent illumination is, is inward. Um, the, other, the, other, uh, the other part is um, a taji, tajiyu is, is actually then to shine out. So it's, so it's to emit, you know, so, so it's, it's uh, this function that happens at the same time in which it's big. So, so it's a, it is inward, but then it is, it's outward, but it happens at the same time. Um, this, uh, let's see here. So, when we uh, when we take this seated posture, it's very important to to as as uh, Uchiyama Roshi says is letting 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 go or opening the hand of thought. So it's it, it's it's your body. The body has to relax. You know. The body stores up a lot of a lot of stuff throughout the day, throughout throughout the week, throughout the months, the years, the the decades, <laughs> the centuries, and back. So we relax, we relax uh, in this this peacefulness, or or this uh, as Dogen says, I think it's a peaceful repose that you relax and so it's the, this repose that you you lay down everything so you let you let go you let go of everything 
and then you you let you let zazen then of course it is you know it is this self that comes like we're gonna sit zazen this morning so we have to turn on the computer and now you're <laughs> you're sitting zazen as individual but as as the zazen or as the individual starts to drop off and it starts to loosen you know the conditioned mind starts to loosen then things drop off then uh there is there is you would say there is our self and that's when that's when we appear so it's uh uh not not only do we we appear but then the the universe the universe appears so when when uh when the light when the light of the self is clear then then dullness and distraction are are struck aside that's what also dogen says in the, the fukan zazengi it's extremely uh, important to to aim though when we sit it's it's to aim and to actively uh, participate you would say a dog uh, uh, a roshi's book actively participation in loss so so this is a this is a letting go it's a it's a loss but but it's a uh, it's we we aim we aim with this this vibrancy or this vividness or this uh, uh, this freshness with our life. We have to be there. Other otherwise, it's a waste of what we do. When when the mind you you would say doesn't function. You know, and, and it becomes kind of, uh, I'm sure everyone knows, I, I think I, I've experienced this many times when the mind doesn't function and, and it becomes dull or it's not there. Um, you, uh, you, don't, you don't hear sounds or you don't feel pain. You don't even, you don't see your thoughts. You know, it's just a blank, a blank screen. <laughs> that, that's, that's that's a void or it's an emptiness which isn't vibrant you know emptiness is something that's vibrant it's and it's all it's all inclusive of all all things but this void is just it's just a stagnant activity um so so when we when we aim when we aim at zazen or or this posture, this seated posture, we we like Dogen says in the Fukan Zazengi, it's, or or even uh, Bodhidharma says it's it's like a crane, or they're like birds, you know, birds in the sky, how they how birds fly in the sky, you know, or or it's like a tiger, you know, a tiger how she walks walks through the mountain. Um, it, it's it's a uh, it, it's vibrant and it's and it's alive. However, then there's the other the other part. If we become too um, uh, distracted in our thoughts, you know, in in everything, then we feel the pain, right? <laughs> we feel the pain, or we feel our our nose itches. Um, we hear sounds outside. Oh, that's a car. The trash. The, the garbage guy is coming right now. And I, I know because I heard him come every Friday. <laughs> that's, those are distractions that exist outside. And then that's also stagnant. So, so that's, that's a practice also that's stagnant. So there's, there's a distinguishing and then also there's this non-distinguishing or thought and no thought. Um, when when the cloudless light illuminates itself then then there is no need uh, to tamper with it <laughs> you know when when things become settled a lot of times 
you become settled and maybe mind and body drop off. And then, then you go, oh, what was that sound? And then the ego, the ego comes in there. But there's no need to make mental struggle. Just let, let it go and let it be. So there's no, there's no waste of energy on anything, on an elusiner, elus, illusory thinking, you know, whether it's a distraction or whether it's not a distraction. But there's, no, there's absolutely no energy in trying to wrestle, wrestle what's, what's happening, but just let it, let it go and then let it be. When when we tamper with it or when we we when we wrestle with ourselves then then the the this wisdom or the light your your own wisdom or the buddha's wisdom then this this light becomes clouded you know and then also then it becomes dark so that's when we we wrestle with it and then but however, when we wrestle with it, this wrestling becomes uh, uh, this this wrestling its itself, or letting go of the wrestling itself. Then, then the light, then only only it cannot help. But this wrestling then becomes, or this darkness becomes the light. So it's it's a uh, it's very very interesting so um this this is is the term the light the light of the jewel illuminates actually now the the jewel itself it's an illumination that happens of the self when when this this illumination like i was saying is is the activity or or the uh, the vividness of this one thing or the self or this individual thing, the vividness of that activity then creates the activity of all things. So the light within this jewel illuminates the jewel itself, which a jewel. When when you have a diamond, I have a big diamond <laughs> in our house. And when the sun shines on this diamond, then it reflects and it reflects out. So this is, this is the body that reflects and it cannot help, but the body reflects on the bodies of everything. And this is it's one, the one body in which all things then reflect, you know, through this eye the wisdom that reflects then all things as one. But however, everything has their own, their own place. I have my own place on Sonoma Mountain and, and uh, everybody has their own place on the internet, <laughs> maybe in Denmark <laughs> right now, <laughs> maybe in London, they have their own place, but at the same time, everything is connected and we are one body. It's not through the internet. It's not through Zoom. <laughs> but we are transmitting. We are receiving and we are transmitting. That's big. You know, and then when when this happens, then that's that's liberation of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. That's liberation of all things, of all delusion of all things at that very moment of this very moment or of very moments that exist in the future or even the very moments exist in the past. Um, in, instead instead of, of looking at meditation to gain something, the, the meditation itself or this practice of, of sitting just this sitting is is actually this this one turning of then the practice and enlightenment. Um, it, it's a a very a vital point, or it's a very it's a pivot in which then then all things then become then become a part of us, and then that's how that's how our whole entire world 
becomes actually us. Um, so when the, the, the sun shines uh, on all things, then, then the sun doesn't have any, any discrimination. Could be a cat or dog, or could be a mountain. It could be sun, moon, the trees. Oh, the sun. Does the sun shine on the moon? Yeah, does it? <laughs> Am I? I think the sun does shine on the moon. Um. So, uh, let me see. I have a couple things I I would like to read. So, so Dogen, Dogen says that you, you should stop a intellectual practice of pursuing words. So this is looking outside of ourselves or, or learning or studying. And we, we, should, we should learn to step backward or to shine to shine our light or turn the light around and shine it back. And the mind and body will naturally drop off and the original face will appear. So this is, this is looking into the mind source or uh, not looking out, which is called the echo hencho of turning the light around and shining or looking back. Kanchi Sosan, one of the early teachers of our Soto Zen school, expresses this process in the following terms. As a beginner, knowing there is something fundamental in oneself, when one shines the light and shifts the direction from our usual senses outside or our experience, to the essence of mind, then one rejects form or ejects form, sound, smell, flavor, touch, and phenomena, and attains then this tranquility. Then after fully accomplishing this, one does not grasp the sense data, but descends among them without being blinded, letting them be without interference. So Dogen's teacher mentions, you should gouge out your eyes and see nothing at all. After that, there will be nothing you don't see. Only then can it be called seeing. You should block off your ears and hear nothing at all. After that, there will be nothing you don't hear. Only then can it be called hearing. You should knock off your nose and not distinguish smells. After that, there will be none you can distinguish. Only then it can be called smelling. You should pull out your tongue so that the whole world is silent. And after that, ebulence will be uninterrupted. Only that can it be called speaking. You should slough off the physical elements and be completely independent. After that, you manifest forms adapting to various types. Only then can it be called being a true person. You should permanently stop clinging to thought so the incalculable ages are empty. And after that arising and vanishing, continue unceasing only then can it be called consciousness. Let's see. Yeah. I, 
I think I'm getting a a, a time a, a time limit, but I want to read one more paragraph. Is it does anyone if if anyone wants to to leave, they can. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on going just for a couple more minutes. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Now the Tathagata settles peacefully in the Buddhahood, which transcends thoughts and discrimination, radiates the great light of virtue and illuminates all sentient beings in the 10 realms who are caught by thoughts and discrimination. This Samadhi was transmitted from the Tathagata to the venerable Mahakashapa face to face then transmitted through 28 generations up to the great master Bodhidharma in India. Further, it was intimately transmitted for 51 generations from the Buddha up to Ehe Dogen, now to us, to Shunryu Suzuki Roshi, to Kuang Roshi, now to us. This is the king of samadhis, which has been passed down hand to hand through the Buddhas and, and patriarchs. Since this samadhi cannot be grasped by discriminatory thoughts, no commentators on the sutras or scriptures who only try to interpret the meaning of the words can fathom it even in a dream, no matter how intelligent they are. Only when we sit zazen in our daily life are our eyes open to the reality outside of the domain of thoughts and discrimination. We just illuminate our thoughts, which moment by moment come up and go away, refrain from fabricating adoption or rejection and hatred or love. As with the Tathagata, what we do in our zazen is expressed as radiating the great light, illuminating the whole world in the, the entire 10 directions and release all sentient beings from suffering. Thank you.